Hey everyone, I got some good news to share with you. Sega just released the Sega Saturn Mini and I'm glad to do a DRS video on that. Also, I'm completely lying. This is not a DRS video and what I'm about to show you, you kind of wish they did. So I present to you the Sega Saturn Plastic Model Kit Best Hit Chronicle, which is far too big. Can I zoom out? No, I cannot. Yep, it's... <sighs> How am I going to do this? So, yes, best hit chronicle. There's the Sega Saturn logo. Sega Saturn, which they used in Japan. And, of course, that's how you build it. And, ooh, shiny reflections. Plastic model kit. There's some text. Sega Saturn represents a leap into the new age of entertainment. Its launch is a new step for Sega, too. Let's go forward together. Yes, let's go forward together. And kind of wish they did the same thing in the US and the all around Europe I guess we know how well the Sega Saturn did in Japan and as well as in the US and all throughout so yay I guess but anyway it's from Bandai or as we now know it Namco Bandai yep good to see that logo again so yes copyright Sega Bandai Spirits 2020 made in Japan and some Japanese text and there's some English too. The actual product may vary slightly from the images on the package. <laughs> Great, so we'll never know what we're going to get. The image are for illustration purposes only. That's good, even though it's a bit out of focus, so there's that. Alright, so let's look around. Some... Yeah, it's all in Japanese. Most of it I could read, but I don't plan on to. All that good stuff. And more good stuff. And, yep, more good stuff. So let's go ahead and open it up. Let's see what we get ourselves inside. And as usual, and I did that because, oh, yep, I don't get much. Yep, there's a plastic uh, miniature CD. The top part that goes to it. The PCB board which goes underneath that thing and some stickers which you could put on that plastic CD got a Sakura Wars uh, Nights into Dreams and Virtual Fighter Remix is it Remix or the just a plain vanilla Virtual Fighter I'm gonna go with plain vanilla Virtual Fighter as opposed to Virtual Fighter Remix because the polygons will look a bit different and you got a bunch of stickers and all that stuff so why does it look like this? And why does it look... Oh, oh, there's another bit in here. What is this? Is that the... Uh, oh, the controller port. Yep, that's where it goes to. So, it looks empty. Let's throw the box. Why does it look like that? Well, because I've already built the thing. And here's what it looks like. It is a gray Sega Saturn. With some bit of black and some blue. There's the Sega sticker that I managed to put on the best as I could. Same thing with the Sega Saturn sticker. Also say Sega here. Yep. And looking throughout, it does look like... And the uh, the important bits, I'm plugging it into the wall and such. And this doesn't look normal. Why does it look like that? Well, uh, there's another sticker too. Why does it look like that? Well, because, well... Well, before I tell you, let me, let's me compare sizes with the actual Sega Saturn, which is probably going to be too big to fit on the desk. Yes, it's far too big. This is a black Sega Saturn, which we, us Americans, and I'm guessing Europe and all throughout the world, I'm assuming, got, except for Japan. Yeah, compare this to... Yeah, it's night and day how big the Sega Saturn is and how big this thing is. Let me just put that to one side. Ah, okay. So, so you could see two micro USBs, another micro USB headphone thing, and open this bit up. It has HDMI and that. So you're thinking to yourself, A, hey, why does it look like that? Well, remember what I said at the beginning of the video that, you know, if Sega were to release a Sega Saturn Mini, this could be it right here. Maybe a little bit bigger, but this could be it right here. 
And now just thinking about it, yeah, you kind of wish Sega would, you know, make something like this. After all, I mean, they're the ones behind the Sega Genesis mi uh, Mini or Mega Drive Mini. And yeah, as far as that, that thing and its emulation is just very pristine. <sighs> yeah, I can't imagine if if Sega actually did this, they would have do, do blah, 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 blah. Let's try that again. Sega did the Genesis slash Mega Drive Mini, and that was good. If Sega, Sega would have make a Saturn Mini, it would be great. Next thing you know, it's Sega Dreamcast Mini. Yeah, I'm looking forward to all that. After all, the only two things they have, of course, is the... The... Was it again? I'm already forgetting. Great. The Genesis Mega Drive Mini and these Game Gear Micros, which only sold in Japan. So... So you're curious to see why it why it looks like that? I'm stumbling upon words. Can you tell? So you're wondering why is this not in here? Well, I'm gonna have to open to gonna gonna have to. I have to do it anyway because I'm filming. So jump cut while I take this apart. And inside you could see there's an entire different PCB board made by the good folks at RGR, which stands for Retro Game Restore. Yep, these folks decided to take it upon themselves to make a board that would fit the Sega Saturn uh, Mini, potentially, or this model kit, rather. And not on top of that, have the ability, ability to use the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. So you could do, I mean, what can you do with it? It's obviously make yourself an, a DIY emulation box, per se. And, yep, just looking at it, not too bad. I mean, I kind of like this thing, not thinking about it. The only problem with it is being able to set this up because this is meant to... Let's look around again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Alright, so this this board is meant for a CM4 light. This is not a CM4 light. There's a EMMC somewhere around here. Around here somewhere. Yeah, you could find it. So upon building this thing and putting it together and everything else, uh, I got nowhere with it. So come to find out, I had to use one of these things. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 CM, Raspberry Pi 4? A Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 I.O. board, which has all these apparatuses, 2 HDMI, Ethernet, USB, micro USB, SD card, and all this and that. So what I had to do is flash the EMMC, make it to where there's nothing in it, and installed uh, RetroPie on it. So I had to spend money on a board just so I could flash this. So, it was a bit annoying. So, now, but this is no loss either because I plan to get another CM4 module and do something with it. Now, I just got to find a case that would go with it. So, there's that. Oh, and also, I almost forgot. It came with this chibi looking, <laughs> chibi looking. It's a, a very chibi micro sized Sega Saturn controller. Yep, good luck playing with that. And of course, the other end is the proprietary Saturn port controller, controller port, whatever you want to call it. It's this thing that goes into the Sega Saturn. I think it looks really nice. Too bad. <sighs> yep. So anyway, not that I built this thing. You want to see me building this thing? Act. You might as well. You might as well, because I have the footage for that. So here's me building this thing.
Well, I must admit, uh, I'm pretty good at building things like this since I used to build Gumplas before. But I'm not so good at building things some like this But when I'm looking through the viewfinder of a camera. Yep. But yeah, this is a good thing to make, you know, for on its own or to add extra stuff like, yeah, what you just saw. I got nothing left to say on this thing, but do I think it's worth it? I say, hell yeah. It's worth getting it to build and just to have it displayed with, you know, put everything together and all that stuff. I don't even know why I'm showing you this, but I mean, if you want to build a miniature Sega Saturn just to have on the shelf, then yeah, I say go for it. But if you want to build, build, if you want to have your own emulation thing with RetroPie and all that stuff, then I would say it's a good investment. You probably spend about, oh, I don't know, like 120 in total. So the, so this thing costed me about, I think 30 bucks or so around there. I don't remember. But the board itself, which you could buy from Retro Gamer Store, they go for $44 a piece. So for $44 for the board, 30 for this thing, and you're obviously going to have to spend on a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. Particularly if you get a CM Lite, it'd be a lot easier and because that way you could put a micro SD card and not have to flash it like I did. So I would say it's a good investment. So yeah, that'll do it for me right here. So yep, I'm going to call it here. Uh, stay tuned for the next DRS video which it's going to happen Sunday. And I'm looking forward to showing you it because, well, I could be I could be somewhere else throughout that weekend, but sadly, I got priorities making DRS videos and such. But anyway, that'll do it for me. Until then, take care. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.